So it struck me that the president recently found time to apologize to someone who had been up here on the Hill testifying, but he never found time to apologize to those who he told you cannot practice your religious beliefs. Oh, yeah, he tried to make an accommodation for a church and hospital, but Catholics that have these closely held beliefs, I'm a Baptist, but good grief, if you're going to tell a Catholic they can't practice their religion, because as some in this body have said, a majority think you shouldn't, you're going to tell people they can't practice their religious beliefs? For heaven's sake, at least giving them an apology, but not so. No apology there. So I thought, well, maybe it'd be helpful to track exactly what deserves apology and what doesn't. Well, we remember when the president first came into office, first thing he did was take what a lot of people refer to as the apology tour. He went around the world apologizing for America's arrogance toward countries where we had Americans buried who gave their last full measure of devotion to free those countries. But the president found time. Do they get an apology or no apology? Yep, got an apology. All right. There were Bush policies that our president said toward countries that we actually give tremendous amount of money to, but who vote against us over half the time in the U.N., do they get an apology? Bingo. He found time to give them an apology. The family of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, murdered by Operation Fast and Furious gun that our government forced to be sold to criminals. Well, no time for an apology. They don't get one. The CIA enhanced interrogation that saved lives and led to finding Osama bin Laden. We do have time to apologize for that. They get one. All right. Detaining terrorists who killed or conspired to kill Americans at Guantanamo, even though there's not been a single incident of waterboarding or torture of any kind remotely at Guantanamo, although when you th they throw feces or urine on our guards, we will take away two hours of their movie watching. Still, they get an apology from this White House. The accidental 2012 burning of, the, of these Korans that were desecrated by the writing of, of detainees, yes, they got an apology. The families of the American soldiers who were killed after President Obama said he, quote, calmed things down by apologizing to Afghanistan. Nope, didn't get an apology. No apology there. Our own soldiers, but nope, no apology. Death of two Pakistani soldiers in Pakistan and the injuries of four other Pakistanis in 2010 when a plane, um, we're told, made a mistake. Yep, Pakistanis. They get apology, but Americans don't. Pakistanis do. The president's support for the Ground Zero Mosque at 2010 White House Iftar dinner, opposed by most Americans, including 9-11 survivors. Most Americans didn't want a mosque at Ground Zero. The president said it was a matter of religious freedom. So basically, word apology I don't believe was used, but it was an apology. We believe in them being allowed to do that, even though it offends most Americans and Victims' families, yep, yep, they're at the White, they were at the White House hearing how sorry he was that Americans opposed that. Comments in 2011 that Israel should return to its 1967 borders that would have subjected it to relentless attacks and vulnerability, as Prime Minister Netanyahu explained. No, nope, Israel doesn't get one. No apology for Israel. His good friends Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn, the first people to have a fundraiser at the House for him. They were part of a radical left-wing group, Weather Underground, detonated a bomb at the Pentagon in 1972. And we know there are people still serving the military that were around when the Pentagon was attacked by his biggest, earliest supporters. They don't get an apology. 
No apology there. Ordering many Christians to violate their religious beliefs and pay for abortion, drugs, and contraceptives. Nope, no apology there. Violates your religious beliefs. Too bad. No apology. Comments by President Obama and President Sarkozy in 2011 at the G20 summit where they belittled Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. He's Israeli. No apology for that. Comments made by Rush Limbaugh in his radio program about pro-abortion activists and Georgetown Law student Sandra, and I'm told it's Flock, Fluke, whatever. Uh, yes, President found time for that apology. Uh, President's support for not allowing nurses to save babies that were born alive after a botched abortion. We've heard from some of those, at least one of those nurses, how brokenhearted they were sitting there having to be forced to watch a baby die. No apology for those folks. Attendance. For 20 years at Trinity United Church of Christ, where radical pastor Reverend Jeremiah Wright used racial and anti-Semitic terms, inflammatory rhetoric, and insulting comments about Hillary Clinton from his pastor. Uh, I believe the comment was he could no more disown that fine gentleman, which he later did. No apology for anybody offended by that. And inflammatory and indecent comments of one of President Obama's biggest supporters, Bill Maher, regarding Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman, tens of times worse than anything Rush Limbaugh would have ever dreamed of saying. Um, that's right, no apology for them. So I think it helps to chronicle exactly what deserves an apology from the White House these days, you know, just so we know where policies lie and where this president stands and with whom he stands.